So it's 2007. I'm in Atlanta. I'm in the heart of the hood on Old National and Gobby Road. <laughs> Shout out to College Park. I'm in the flea market of all flea markets, the discount mall. And I'm standing there with a friend going back and forth with a local shopkeep. And I go, hey, there's a song jumping on. And it's the smash hit summer song of the year. It's called Hood Nigga, N-I-G-G-A, by a local Atlanta rapper, Gorilla Zoe. And when the song comes on, I go, yo, <laughs> that's my song. That dude is ridiculous. And the man goes, well, that's my song because that's all I am. I ain't nothing but a hood nigga. It's not what he said. It was how he said it. Because when he said it, it hit me in my mind, body, and soul. And I knew that instantly I was in a sunken place. You see, I realized three things in that moment standing there with him. I realized, one, we got to stop quoting rappers, all right? We don't take life advice from people who suck at life. No mas. <laughs> Two, we never outperform our own self-image. You see, my friend didn't see a, a miracle, a man of God, a millionaire in the making, an entrepreneur that he really is. In his own words, he told you what he was. And our thoughts become our reality. And I knew the birds of a feather, right? The third thing I realized was how far I had fallen. You see, it had been 15 months since I transitioned out of the army and standing him there that day with him, I realized I was in a different army, the army of the unemployed. For legal purposes, let's just say I had an entanglement with unemployment, right? So I realized who I was and where I was in that moment wasn't great. And more importantly, I didn't know where I was going or, or really who I needed even to become to get there. It really was taking place as I was a part of a bigger statistic. You see, there are five big issues in the military community, five. Unemployment, mental health, homelessness, lack of education, and physical injuries. For the sake of today's talk, I'm just going to focus on the first three. So let's dive in. The first one is unemployment. Now, this is important because even before, during, or after COVID, soldiers are always one of the highest numbers of unemployment. Last year alone, it was over 600,000. So you tell me what impacts our neighborhood or our world? More than unemployment, especially when your neighbors are like that, right? And what I didn't understand was I saw myself and I sold myself and I branded myself to the marketplace as a soldier. And soldiers don't get hired. Business professionals do. Message. This, and it was crazy because I realized, yo, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier, I'm a soldier. Help me hire me, I'm a veteran, help me. But I had to mentally transition from the mindset of a soldier to the mindset of a business professional. So when I flipped it around, I said, wait a second, how can I help your business grow? How can I impact your bottom line? How can I help your business make more money, save more money, or save time? Business professional, not a soldier. You understand? We are trained for the combat battlefield and not the economic battlefield and understanding that we are the CEOs of our own career. The second biggest issue is homelessness. It's one word I'm gonna wrap this up with. It's called house hack. Take your VA home loan and get a multi-unit property, a duplex, a triplex, a quadplex. You can live in one unit and rent out the others. If I was Secretary of Veteran Affairs for a day, I would make it mandated that all soldiers before they exit have to get a multi-unit property, right? You have a VA home loan, use it. The third biggest issue is the hardest. It's called mental health. Put them in two categories. We say that half the, country, half the country suffers from depression, the other half suffers from anxiety. So we have a fear of the past and a fear of the future. Can't get over what happened last childhood or last deployment or last decade or last century. And we have a fear of tomorrow and it ain't even hit yet. Add that up, we have suicide. Let me pause right there. When I was 18 years old, I was up at Fort Bragg. Oh, airborne. <laughs> and then I was sent to... Uh, Afghanistan. So they sent an 18 year old boy into a man's war. When I came back, we met with the chaplain. He gave us the Lord's Prayer, gave us his business card, saying, Y'all feeling any type of way? Call me. All hours I'm here. 15 minutes after meeting with the chaplain, me and a group of guys went to the nearest on base liquor store. Somebody gave me a bottle of Hennessy and a 12 pack of Miller High Life and said, Don't just walk it off, drink it off. You, you're an army now. You'll be all right, soldier. Just a, a, a soldier issue, an American issue. Because I was today's years old when I realized why every aunt in America keeps a bottle of or a box of wine in their fridge. Salute. And see, when I was doing some homework for the speech, what I realized was 14 veterans a day commit suicide, which is mind boggling seeing that was 365 days in a year. So when I looked at the last five major wars, the last five major combats, 
Vietnam, both wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, invasion of Panama. I realized that 68,000 troops were killed in combat. 68,000, that's a large city. But what I didn't realize was just since 9-11, y'all, just since 9-11, 98,000 veterans have committed suicide. So we got 68,000 killed in combat, but 98,000 killed by their own, right? Which is like devastating to me. Because I'm like, oh, the enemy, they train us to be a soldier, have a heartbeat of a soldier. So they say the enemy's in Iraq. No, no, the enemy's in Afghanistan. No, no, no. The enemy's south of the border. Build the wall. Keep the enemy out. <laughs> hey, time off was like, yo, whatever happened to like the caravan? Is that like a real thing? No, no. Just went away overnight. No. Different, different TEDx. Different TEDx. Cool, cool, cool. Keep, build the wall. Keep the enemy out. So the enemy's over there and over there. But what if the enemy's like right in here? Right? What I realized that day in the flea market, that what I was trying to do by a status symbol, I realized that you, me, we all have a hole in our heart in the shape of our struggle. And it's like an American thing, not just a soldier thing. We like self soothe, like we, we're self taught how to self soothe. So we learn to just suffer in silence. And it's wild because, like, we were trained for the combat battlefield. We weren't trained for the mental and spiritual and emotional battlefield. That's why everybody runs to happy hour at, on Friday at five o'clock or they Netflix and numb, right? It's wild to me. It's like, not why the addiction, but why the pain? So who am I talking to? And let's be clear about this. So we have like our current reality and we have our desired reality. And it's like, what's that bridge to get there? Well, here's the secret sauce. And let me be clear. So I'm talking to my base commanders at Fort Bragg. I'm talking to my guys at Fort Hood. I'm talking to all the nerds at Fort Gordon. I was one of y'all. I'm talking to my old unit down at Sock South, Southcom. You lucky bastards stationed in Hawaii. Or the even luckier ones in Italy. I'm talking to my naval air station down at Jacksonville. I'm asking you guys, I'm asking to the, the, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, the Secretary of, of you know, de Defense, it's like we have to mentally, mentally have these brave men and women transition from a soldier's mindset to a business professional's mindset. But people struggle without a system. So here's mine. Here's what I did. And I call it the rule of 168. I'm going to give you what I like to call, uh, since you're soldiers, you either give orders or you follow orders. So here are your final marching orders for success after the military. And they go as follows. The first one, I need you to establish an LLC in your name. You, LLC. Why? The best way for me to tra mentally transition you is to change your, your elevation. The best way for me to change your elevation is changing your vision in the process. If you are the CEO of you, LLC, we don't have to apply for the dream job. We can create the dream job we've been applying for. But we were transitioned and trained to be soldiers and not business professionals. That's not cool. I love being in the military, but I'm not. A, you can't be in the army the, your whole life. Right. The second marching order, I can't run away from that suicide number. It's too big. So I would be doing a travesty if I didn't even speak on it. The second marching order goes as follows. Listen, I love soldiers because they love themselves. So, they love their country so much. Like if America was a person, like this was a child, you would love her, take care of her, protect her. But you would never, ever hurt her. But some of y'all would hurt yourselves. So your second marching order is this. I need you to love yourself as much as you love your country. That's an order. And your third and final marching order goes like this. So check it. If you wore that uniform to me, kind of like our brother Pat Tillman, like you're a hero. So just when you take that uniform off, it doesn't mean you're not a hero anymore. But now I need you to be the hero of your own story. Because I'm tired of hearing people losing, building a life of mediocrity when really you're a miracle. But people struggle without a system, without a coach, without a framework, without a process. And we don't have any final marching orders to be successful after that. Ain't got no business losing, y'all. And now, to be clear, this is not a motivational speech. I'm not a motivational speaker. There's no cliches here, just mastery. I need you to understand something. Like, this is a clarity conversation, a strategy session. My name is Richie Thomas, and I'm a soldier's coach. And I help and train men and women in the armed forces to mentally transition from a soldier's mindset to a business professional's mindset so they can impact our neighborhood and our world and step into their true purpose. I think that's my time. Damn. Peace.